just by way of introduction for our audience, I just want to say uh, with us on the line is uh, Dr. Jawanza Kunjufu, who is a legendary author of over 65 books. We had the serendipity of uh, sharing on our channel, Countering the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys, and it just went viral. It was just one of the, those things where people um, said, where was this information when I was a kid? And it's like, well, Juwanza Kanjufu has been talking this, preaching this information for over three decades and, and with us today. I just wanted to take a few minutes to uh, honor and help amplify your voice, Dr. Juwanza. So welcome welcome to Real Black uh, Podcast. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, you know, um, for those who are new to it, new to you and African American images can can you share a little information about how you got started and what you what you what your mission is well we started in 1974 and we started first as a consultant to school districts trying to close the racial academic achievement gap for example on the SAT whites are scoring 1118 and African Americans only 945. And when school districts bring me in to work with their teachers, they assume that the reason for the gap is either because the children are poor, because the father's missing in action, because the mother lacks a degree, or poor parental involvement. But we feel are the reasons why whites score 1118 and we only score 945 is because teachers give black children low expectations. They do not bond with them. They give a Eurocentric curriculum and they have poor classroom management skills. So that's what we started off doing and we continue to do that. We've been doing this for almost 45 years since 19. 74. We also are a book publisher, and we publish not only my work, but we publish other authors like Malefi Asante, Michael Porter, Gail Thompson, and numerous others, Shaheed Muhammad. So that's our second venue. The third is that we work with community organizations on creating rites of passage programs, Saturday schools, mentoring programs. And then also I'm a preacher, and several of the books that I've written, one is titled, Adam, Where Are You? Why Most Black Men Don't Go to Church. It's unfortunate that most churches are two-thirds female and one-third male. And not only is there a problem trying to get Adam Sr. to go to church, but we also have a problem with Adam Jr. Most churches are having a real difficult time trying to keep their young black male teenagers in the church. 70% of teenagers leave the church. All right, so going back to 74, uh, we, there was, that was a period of change. I mean, you, I think what people, when they look at the counting conspiracy videos and, and the work and read the books that you were publishing in the 80s specifically, it's almost like you predicted where we are now in 2019, 2020. And, you know, in, in some ways it's, it's, it's sad. It's, it's scary. I mean, what, what were some of the things that you were noticing back then and how have things amplified or changed in positive or negative directions since then? Well, one of the areas that we did a lot of research on was the fourth grade syndrome. We've noticed that black boys do relatively well preschool through third grade, but their scores decline from the fourth grade on. Now, unfortunately, there are governors who've used my research to determine prison growth based on the decline of fourth grade reading school. That was not our objective. Our objective was to intervene in fourth grade and provide more male mentors, more male tutor, tutors, more male teachers, a, a right brain lesson plan 
meaning that you address the needs of oral, tactile, kinesthetic learners, that you find ways to infiltrate the peer group, because unfortunately, from the fourth grade on, the peer group discourages academic achievement to the extent that some children are accused of acting white if they speak quote-unquote standard English or if they're doing well academically, i.e. honor roll, AP, honors, gifted and talented classes. So one of our, our major concerns is the fourth grade syndrome. Another one, one of our concerns is the disproportionate percentage of black children in special education. We're 17% of the children in public schools, but we're 41% of the special ed children. And if a black child is placed in special ed, 80% of the time, it's the male child. So my question to teachers, have we designed a female classroom for large numbers of male students, even white boys? are placed in special ed more than white girls. There's a two to one ratio of white boys to white girls in special ed. There's a three to one ratio of black males to black females in special education. And then lastly, in terms of the schoolhouse to jailhouse pipeline, only 12% of black boys are proficient in reading by eighth grade. Now, the number one precursor on being incarcerated is illiteracy. If we teach black boys how to read, we have an 80% chance of keeping them out of jail. But the problem is that most black boys have never been given a book that they love so much they cannot put it down. They've only been given a book for a school assignment. They never fell in love with reading. So we've created with my publishing company, African American Images, a set of books titled Best Books for Boys that inspires them, that, that includes them in the storyline. They see themselves. They see their culture. They're motivated to read. It has been said that you have to go to jail to learn your history in your culture. That's ridiculous. Without question. Yeah, well, one of the through lines, and, and, and certainly I want people to definitely go to the uh, African American Images website and go through the entire catalog. I mean, we only have a few minutes, you know, to concentrate on, on some of the the empowerment books, but, but um, you know, there's really hundreds of, of titles and, and resources there. You've, you've done, a, you know, just God's work in terms of getting this information for us and, and keeping it there, staying in business, you know, so I, I love you for that. Um, you know, in terms, of, but, you know, the other question, when did, when did you start to see this trend? Is it, is it a result of integration of public schools or was it before? I mean, you know, one of the, me one of the messages clearly is if you can see it, you can be it. And there certainly has been a, uh, more attention paid to what we look at on media than we do around in our own immediate surroundings in the last um, few decades. I'm, I'm, I'm 50 years old, so I, I can kind of remember the 80s. And, um, you know, I, you know, things have certainly changed. I mean, when did you start to notice a change and what, what do you think some of the triggers were have been? Well, I started in 1974 with the first volume of Countering the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys was in 1982. And then I wrote volume two in 86, volume three in 90, and volume four in 1994. But in terms of answering your question on when I saw it, unfortunately, with integration in Brown versus Topeka in 1954, since 1954, there's been a 66% decline in African American teachers. So presently, 83% of America's teachers are white and female. Only 6% are African American, and only 1% are African American male. 
So literally, the future of the black race lies in the hands of white female teachers. The other concern that I noticed is that in 1920, 90% of black youth had their fathers in the home. In 1960, it was still relatively high at 80%. But in 2019, it has dropped from 90 to 80 to 28%. So the combination of white female teachers and black boys in particular being reared by black mothers or single parent mothers, that's a bad combination. Yeah, and you know the and then I guess from my standpoint, looking at media, there's not a lot of positive. It tends to be an emasculation process in the media, in terms of um, giving us symbols or representation of um, strong black men, strong black family. It, it seems to be geared a certain way. Do you do you have any thought on that, or you have any observation on, of what media does for us? Well, there's no question that most of the media gives a negative image of African-American males where we're shiftless, unemployed, um, our values are warped. But there are some positive shows like Queen Sugar and Ralph Angel, who's a single parent raising his son Blue. And that to me, that storyline is exactly what I'm about with regards to a strong black man trying to do the right thing and raise his son. And I don't know if you're familiar with the storyline. He's not even the biological father, but he and Blue are connected at the hip. Yeah, I like one of um, the things you say in, in one of the videos uh, about the uh, biological father versus the, the, the real father in terms of, uh, I mean, do you, do you know the 18 analogy? I don't want to say it for you. Do you remember? Do you know? Remember that one? Yeah, I mentioned that there are at least five or six types of fathers. We have sperm donors, uh, ice cream daddies, no show daddies, uh, step daddy. I hate that term, step. How can a sperm donor be called the daddy? And he stayed about 18 seconds. And the stepdaddy has stayed 18 years. And then we have grandfathers, we have divorced dads. And let me say this, we, and the media doesn't mention this, in going back to Ralph Angel and Queen Sugar, there are 400,000 African-American males who are single parents. The mother left, the daddy stayed. So not all black men are leaving their children. Right. Well, we, I mean, certainly we don't want to generalize, but we do, I mean, the years of the research and even looking empirically at what you were saying, it, it's not just prophetic, it's almost predictable. So in terms of solution, you know, um, as people would discover you, and again, my goal is to amplify what your voice and, and help get the information out so that we can counter all of the conspiracies, all the things that are working against us within this culture within the society and you know it's the self-hate the the institutionalized things what 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 are, where is your perception now what message are you currently pushing what is your latest book research what can you share with us in terms of moving forward and having um uh objectives to to keep this um keep it keep it alive really Well, one of my latest books is Solutions for Black America. Uh, another book is Changing School Culture for African American Males. And because I've been criticized over my career, and I've spent so much time emphasizing the boys, um, two of my later books are Educating Black Girls and Raising Black Girls. But, but in terms of solutions, the first one, is having strong self-esteem. And I believe it's very difficult to have strong self-esteem if you don't know who you are. 
if you don't have a positive affiliation with Africa, then, then you're not a girl, you're not colored, you're not black, you're not Afro-American, you're African. And, and, and until we accept that, until we like the texture of our hair, the color of our eyes, our hue, then it's going to be very difficult to do well in life. I also think it's very difficult to do well if you do not have a relationship with God. In addition to that, I think you have to be academically sound. You need to be economically self-sufficient. And unfortunately, when I speak to black youth, especially black male youth nationwide, when I ask them what are the three best ways to get paid, they invariably tell me I'm either going pro in the NBA, I'm going to be the best rapper on the planet, or I'm going to be the first drug dealer never to be caught. So we need to teach our boys and our girls entrepreneurship, the stock market, and real estate. I mean, how can you live in a capitalistic country and not understand capitalism? So again, to recap, self-esteem, cultural esteem, a relationship with God, academically self-sufficient, and understand the principles of economics, entrepreneurship, the stock market, and real estate. Wow. In addition to that, as I mentioned earlier, we need more uh, activists involved in rites of passage, mentoring, Saturday schools, because there, there are schools in this country where there's not one black male in the building. And if a black male is in the building, I'm going to wager he's a custodian first, a security guard second, a PE teacher third, an administrator fourth, and if he's a teacher, he's high school first, junior high second, middle school third, intermediate fourth, and primary last. So literally black boys may go K-3, may go K-6, and never experience a black male teacher. Well, I, I know we're, our time is very short. So, I mean, just to be clear, because a lot of people are going to ask this. I mean, are you are you uh, for public school or is it charter school, self, like home school? I mean, where what is the best possible way to make sure that uh, our kids don't fall through these cracks? Is there a system that's in place now that... that um, that's that an excellent school? question. But let me say this, I'm in favor of any institution that is maximizing the development of African American children. Therefore, I'm in favor of the over 100,000 African American parents who are homeschooling their children. And let me say this, the research is showing that black, black children are about the 35 percentile on state exams and white children are at the 75 percentile on state exams. But if a black child is homeschooled, they're scoring at the 82 percentile. Now I want you to hear that. They were the 35 percentile in a failing school. But if they're taught by parents who love them, they score at the 82 percentile. So I'm in favor of homeschooling. I'm in favor of charter schools like Urban Prep and Eagles and Betty Shabazz School, the Barbara Sizemore School, and over, over 500 charter schools that are not only teaching our children their history and their culture, but they also have them in the top quartile on state exams. But in closing, I'm also in favor of the public schools. There's over 1,000 public schools that have strong principles. Some of them are white principals. Some of them have a predominantly white female teaching staff. But these schools demand the best of African American children. They understand their learning styles. They don't lie to them. Columbus did not discover America. Abraham Lincoln did not free the slaves. Hippocrates was not the father of medicine. They are not seven continents. So I'm in favor of any institution that is maximizing the de development of African-American children. So in my work that I do nationwide, 
I work with public schools, private schools, charter schools, homeschool parents, community organizations, churches. I'm working with every institution that's trying to make a difference in the lives of our children. Fantastic. Well, I, I to say preach would be irrelevant because you are a preacher. Um, but for for those who just want more information, uh, how what's the best way to uh, find your books, find find uh, find the research that you've done, and and just stay connected with with the family here because people are always discovering you every day, and um, you know. What's, what's the easiest way? Well, they can call us. They can call us at 708-672-4909. That number again is 708-672-4909. Or they can visit our website www.AfricanAmericanImages.com. Or they can simply Google my name. Jawanza Kanjufu, and they can reach us on the internet. Fantastic. Well, Jawanza Kanjufu, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day just to share. Um, we're all about empowerment here, and um, just very gracious that uh, you you didn't come after us for sharing your video, and, and maybe in the future we can get more information about you. Again, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for fighting the fight and recording the information so that we have it. We appreciate it. Keep up the good work, Michael.